inside this container sits the newest addition to the animal room. Right here I've got somewhat of a rare turtle species. This is Glemis guttata, or better known as the North American Spotted Turtle. This is one of the smallest turtle species in the world, and due to their small size, they are a very easy target for predators and poachers. This causes them to be endangered in the wild. Luckily, I was fortunate enough to find a breeder who successfully bred several generations of this species, ensuring me this little fella was not taken from their wild population. Although this is an aquatic turtle, they are terrible swimmers. This means we need to make sure the water is only as deep as they are long, ensuring they can always stick their head out of the water while standing on their back feet. If we don't do this, we run the risk of drowning our new friend, which is something we definitely want to avoid. So before we can introduce this little guy to his new home, we need to modify the design a little bit. This tank was first set up around a month ago and designed around the needs of an adult. Therefore the water level is way too high, so the first thing I'll do is lower the water level about 60%. This causes the filter's return to be above the waterline, which in itself isn't a problem, but the water flowing out at high speeds creates quite a lot of noise. In order to slow down the flow, I stuffed a little bit of filter floss behind the return piece, making it much quieter. I also added a few pieces of driftwood, so the turtle has plenty of place he can climb out of the water. The next day I noticed the water was stained brown. This is most likely caused by the newly introduced pieces of wood. I must have not cleaned them thoroughly enough, causing them to tint the water brown. Luckily, this doesn't affect the water's quality at all, and is purely aesthetic. At this point in time, the tank was ready for the turtle, but the little guy wouldn't arrive for a few more days. So in the meantime, I got him a few little friends. I'm sure most of you guys will recognize this fish species, as it's one of the most popular aquarium fish. This is a little school of guppies. But these are no ordinary guppies. These are what's called koi super red cap guppies, meaning they have a red colored head and tail but are white in between. Eventually, these fish will be joining our turtle in the Peludarium, but before we do that, I want to increase their population a little bit. To monitor them, I'll be setting up a holding tank. This was a pretty straightforward process. I simply painted the outside of this 110 liter aquarium black, installed a filter with pre-cycled media inside, used play sand as a substrate and filled the tank up with water. The fish were added alongside some plants I wanted to use for a future project. On their first day they were all a little bit nervous, which is understandable. It's been a long journey for them to get here and they were all in need of a good night's rest. I decided to leave them alone for the rest of the day. The next morning, all of the guppies were out and about exploring their new home. I could sense they were all overflowing with joy. At first, I thought they were just very happy with their new home. But on a closer look, one of the females stood out to me as she was particularly happy. As it turned out, she became a mother overnight. I noticed two tiny little babies swimming through the tank. As I netted them up, I came across three more babies. I kept all five of them in the same tank as their parents, but inside a breeder box. This keeps them safe in case one of the adults decides they would make a great snack. Meanwhile, our new turtle friend has arrived. She seemed to be doing fine and eager to get to her new home. But before she could be set free, I wrote down her length and her weight, so we can track her health over time. I also decided to name her Koa. Now then, let's set her free. A 
didn't take long for her to hide away in the shadows. And I don't blame her. Just like the fish, she has had a long journey and was in need of some privacy in order to rest. This however didn't take very long, as she was exploring her new home in only a few hours. That said, she was still a little bit skittish if I came too close to the tank, so I decided to leave her alone for the day. A few days later, everybody was settled in and doing great. The guppies were enjoying their new tank and taking turns watching over the babies. And over in the paludarium, Koa was exploring every single corner of the tank. She even noticed she isn't alone in there. Every now and then, she'll notice something moving in her new territory. This is because I've decided to introduce two Amano shrimp. And these shrimp are on a mission. It's their job to keep this tank free of algae. But this job doesn't come without any danger. Although Koa might look harmless to us, she poses a real threat to these guys. They must never drop their guard, or it could very well mean the end of their mission. Here you can see Koa has noticed one of them and is slowly advancing. The shrimp is in real danger. But right before Koa is about to strike, his friend steps in and distracts Koa. This causes her to shift focus allowing both of them to escape. And this ensures me they are well trained for this mission. Now let's help these shrimp and offer Koa some food so she'll leave them alone for a bit. Right here I have a little cube of frozen turtle food. To my surprise she immediately knows what's going to happen as she rushes to get the food. After a quick inspection she attacks. Once she tasted the food, she attacked again, and again, and again. Devouring the entire cube within only 2 minutes. Seeing me walk around the animal room and feeding Koa, the guppies became jealous and started begging for food as well. I fed them some basic fish food which they really seemed to enjoy. And I also fed some of this to the babies who also seemed to enjoy it very much. Whilst feeding the guppies, I noticed another critter showed himself. What you see right here is called a bamboo shrimp. These guys are quite a lot larger than the Yamano shrimp we've seen before. In addition to his enormous size, you may also notice this guy has six fan-like hands. These serve as mini nets that can be used to easily grab small edible particles and organisms from the water. It's very mesmerizing to watch these in action. I'll pulverize some food on the water so hopefully we'll see him use his majestic hands.
Doesn't that look awesome? But now I'm wondering, which animal do you think has the cutest feeding response? Is it Koa the turtle? Is it the guppies? Or maybe the bamboo shrimp? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.